Welcome to the Nevcast, where three bros talk business, art, justice, and the pursuit of Jesus. Any day above ground is a good day. Get ready to laugh, cry, and kiss 30 minutes goodbye with Peter Nevland, Dave Nevland, and Rashi. Did this happen to your whole group of friends? No. Uh, uh, well, you're talking about the kids that were in the meetings? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, just well, people that you knew and you hung with? or uh, Well, you no. Because you, you just moved to Houston. You were I, a new I, kid in town. Yeah, and, and, and the, the problem with that was that I didn't have groups like this that I had made con- that I could make contact mm-hmm. with. Interesting. But it was the middle of the late, it was the late summer, and I was just getting ready to go to college at Tech in Lubbock. Okay. And oh, when, I, when, I, when I got out there, I met some Christian guys in my dorm who were from Houston. And so when Thanksgiving came okay. and we went back there, which was now home, I went to their church, which was called Bethel Independent Bible Church, uh, North Houston, Northwest Houston. Uh-huh. And it was a totally different experience, right? It wasn't don't girl with girls thing, but it was, you know, Let's look at this passage and see what it really means from the standpoint of Bible church, what are yeah. what are we Bible doing? Church, you know, yeah. what what are we really reading here? And 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 it didn't have a we didn't have a, a guitar and drum and bass, you know, thing at our youth Yet. meetings. Yeah. But I did meet a guy who was about ten years older than the, most of us, who his name was Ray Johnson. I don't mm-hmm. even know if he's still alive. Ray was Ray was a, a, a relatively new Christian. And he had embraced the the Jesus music thing entirely yeah. to the point where he was a well known promoter. So uh-huh. that when 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 the Maranatha groups or Love Song or anybody like that, when they were out on their doing their their tours, which was an amazing adventure, uh, right. they you know they had an Econoline van and all of their equipment went in that Econoline van and they slept on the top of it. Right. On the top of the van? Uh, no, 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 on inside. top of the equipment. Yeah, inside. They wherever didn't have, they could find a... They didn't a, have any money. No, they didn't have any money. They didn't have any right. money. And, and, and Ray was this this, this incredible uh, dude. And and um, and because I knew him, when, Lo- when Love Song came to Tech, came to Lubbock, I got to meet all them. I was like in the right. deal, you, you know. You were a roadie or kind of... Not a roadie, or? but just a kind of a helper, you know, yeah. kind of setup kind yeah. of guy. And I remember, I remember being with them at a sound check in in the uh, Jones Auditorium with, on the campus, and uh, and their drummer was a little guy named Johnny Mailer. Johnny was about that tall, but he was a really great drummer. And and Bob Wall was their lead player. And this of course, seventy two now. This is seventy two, and 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 you know th- these guys were all fantastic musicians. Uh, only they were singing about Jesus now. So anyway, they're doing a sound check and and. And Johnny's up in the in the the upper seats, kind of just walking around, and he's yelling down to Bob, "Do Hendrix, hey, do Hendrix," you know. Dah, 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 dah. And he'd start doing that just for grins, you know. Right. And uh, and so they were really they were really a great group of guys. I met uh, Chuck's uh, Chuck Gerard's wife was with him Chuck on one Gerard. tour, and then I I also helped out with him in in Houston uh, when I was there in the summer of seventy two. Uh, they were they were singing at Jones Hall, and I helped out with that and got to hang out with them a little more after that. So it was it was just a it was a powerful time. Uh, so hey, bring out well, real quick, bring out Ex- Explo seventy two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you that's not in Houston. That no, was in that's Dallas. in Dallas. You went yeah. there. Yes, I was you, there. You that went there, but how? That was a, that how was did a, you go there? That was a week uh, long uh, thing in Dallas, and then at the Saturday, Man, more, look Saturday at that. after that. No, look at this, that. Look at the wow! Look, look at, at the, the crowd. Look at the number of people. Oh, there, but were, then there, also, were, there were probably two hundred fifty thousand people. Yeah. Something this is like, like that. Peter Max. This, yeah, yeah. This is Johnny Cash. Yeah, and Peter Max. Billy Johnny Graham. Cash and Billy Graham were were both there, very very upfront. The love song played. This came uh, to you afterwards, Andre right? Andre Crouch. I bought it that summer. I mean, oh, okay. They, they released it later that Andre year. Andre Crouch. Who else? Andre Who Crouch. Else? Oh. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, of course, Johnny and June. Uh, had, uh, oh, Larry Norman. Larry Norman. Larry Norman. And, and his wife. Larry boss. Norman and yeah. his wife. And, and, and a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and the Dallas Cowboys. Larry, uh, yeah. Oh, God. You know this. <laughs> I know. So yeah, Larry, Larry, Larry the comes Cowboys out. The Cowboys cheerleaders come out, too? Le- no, no. No. 
This guy came out who was on the team at the time. So and wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about just X Explo seventy two right. was almost downtown ish. Yep. It was and in it the was big a, space where the river goes mm -hmm, through. Right where Trinity River oh, is. I know and that. And so okay. it's it was just, it somehow is this mass meeting that got even huger. Yep. Uh, just it was just the wave of something yep. hitting at the time, and they brought all these people together to do this big festival. Basically, exactly. now you know what's gonna you know that what's happening. In, it's this is happening in October at the 50th anniversary of it. Are you They're doing serious? it in Dallas again? Yeah, oh. it's called Gen Z for Jesus. I oh, think it's happening in October. Lord. No, I gotta go to that. Oh. Gen Z, Gen Z no, for I Jesus, and these guys are doing that. it because it's the 50th anniversary of Explo seventy two, which a lot of people talk about as the beginning of the <sighs> Christian music. Well, you that's know. where it became a business, anyway. Yeah, but I, I know. Right. I remember talking to a guy in the late in the early nineties. Asking him where he thought it started, and he said, "Oh, I remember I thinking this. There, this thing has legs when I went to Expo '72. I never heard of Expo '72, and we were, anyways. But it was sponsored by Campus Crusade for Christ. Campus right. Crusade for Christ. Okay, Bill so Ryan Lawrence from California. Okay, so <laughs> there's a, there's some funny stories related to this that would be fun to get uh, 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 recorded. So keep going now. Okay, 80, that's, what, that's what this was. Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. College Dallas, and high school students. It's Dallas." In the Dallas. first night, the first night we were there, the, the nightly meetings were held at the old uh, uh, Cowboy Stadium, right? And Which was brand new at the time. Well, They're it was pretty, pretty new, new, yeah. To, and, and, Irving. and so, but one of the things that they had told us was now the 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 folks that we're renting from here, they asked that we not go down on the field because if you know a hundred thousand of us are tramping around on the field, it's not going to be good for the field. Yeah. Right. So everybody just Real walk grass in at that point. and go up into the go up into the seating and just, you know, get ready. And then we'll start we're coming out with the songs and the groups and, the, and and Billy Graham will come and speak. And he spoke every night, five nights in a row. Oh, right. And um, so, so there was, that was uh, a Texas stadium and <coughs> at this other place outdoor uh, uh, in, in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. At the, night, the nightly, it was a night was stadium, a Texas stadium. And during the day it was. Well, we only, we only went to this thing on Saturday. Oh, okay. This was okay. a Saturday only. Okay, but, gotcha. But gotcha, gotcha. there were breakout sessions right. all over okay. town during the day. Golly. On the, on the For like a whole, this is a whole week. There were 10 or 20 churches that had volunteered to let their facilities be used. And then everybody was handed okay. a, you know, a schedule. This person's speaking here. This person's speaking there. Wow. blah de blah And so everybody was just kind of tooling around and going to these breakout sessions. Right. And then going to get some dinner and then going to Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. Okay. And it was it was just an intense thing. Okay. It's yeah. amazing. All this stuff's happening and, and people and, are going and, everywhere. And so the first the first night we're we're there on a Monday night and and then we're walking in there and and everybody's walking in and the first maybe couple of hundred of people or so are walking up into the stands and they're doing what they're told. Well then some guy jumped over the rail onto the field. And about 500 people followed him down onto the field. And pretty soon the field was covered with people. Right. And this poor guy that was sort of like the master of ceremonies or whatever, he was just a young crusade staff guy. Right. He's up on the mic saying, hey, folks, uh, please don't do this. Remember we asked you not to not to do this? <laughs> and and, I, and, and, and uh, this one cat's down there, and, and I heard him. I was up in the stands, but I heard him because he was close by. He said, he's going to do a Jesus cheer. To, uh, cheer. So he says, give me a J. Give me a U. <laughs> you know, and just, just, just bizarre stuff like that was happening. Well, this went on, this went on for, this went on for a good 10 minutes, right? right. It, was, it was mayhem. The whole thing was just completely destroyed. And then we hear this voice. I want all of you to sit down right now. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. That's Billy Graham. And when I that tell happened, that everybody went, oh. Someone with and everybody, authority. And everybody starts going up out of the, the off the field. And that's, wow. it was amazing. Wow. And it was like, he just, he just commanded it. Right. And what I was told later by a friend of mine who was Crusade staff, he said, Bill Bright was backstage with Billy when everybody started coming in and yeah. jumping on the field. And Bill Bright was distraught. He was weeping. He mm. thought, this is, everything's just going to be, you know, trashed. Yeah. And that's why Billy was so energetic. And he walked right out there and just took control. And it was 
Wow. You know, and I mean, Amazing. growing up in the Baptist church, I had immense respect for him. I've yeah, been to revivals Graham, yeah. and yeah. all that kind of thing. I thought I thought the world of him, so it was like, you I mean, know. He's 30 years into it at that point, yeah. right, basically. Yeah. He yeah. was, yeah, he was the real deal he was. all around. All around. All, all around. around. Fantastic. And, um, and, uh, okay, so everybody went up back in. So everybody stands. goes back in, and then, too, the, then all you know. the groups started coming out, and some of them were like these, uh, like uh, up up with people kind of thing. Uh-huh. You know, there were, uh, five guys and five girls in in nice little outfits with a band playing behind them and Is that singing. You Danny know. Lee and the Children of Truth. Well, something something like you that. Know, yeah, you know. The, five, my other favorite one from that was the Armageddon Experience. Oh like, yes. What exactly is the Armageddon yeah, Experience? Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, and, and, and you, you know, know, and and so Finus a lot of and Marsha Fader oh, probably yeah. I did I it too because that, they uh, played with uh, the uh, Billy Graham Crusade. But okay. I was going to say I was going to talk Some about Larry Norman on a Saturday at the at the thing. Yeah, this guy from the Dallas Cowboys was asked <laughs> to come out and give his testimony, and and I'm sure it was Which genuine, you know. And he, he he came out and and of course back in those days, testimonies often were rather prosaic. Uh, hey, I, I know Jesus. I love Jesus. Thanks. <laughs> You know, I mean, it wasn't, it, it, people didn't, they weren't necessarily going to go into a, like yeah, a story right. time. Well, but he was an athlete. He was an athlete. And so he kind of did this. He kind of did this. And then he goes off stage and then, and then the guy says, now, now, now we're going to ha- feature Larry Norman from California. And so. Had Larry, you know, did you know who Larry Norman no, was before really. this? Not yet. Never. You'd never heard no. of him. Well, I found out that I had listened to him earlier when he right. was, when he was, uh, he was a rock musician and they had a hit record that I'd listened to back oh, in the right. 60s. Oh, what was okay. his, what was uh, his band's uh, name? Uh, uh, I can't so, remember. I uh, can't remember. I can't think of it. What I it love is. you. I love you. I love you, but the words won't come. It's kind of a soft rock. Yeah, it was kind of a, a soft, soft rock, rock band. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, it had a long And I didn't name. know that. I didn't really know that he was that. He put out a and Christian he, album in 69, yes. 68, he, he was one of the early, upon this rock. He was one of the it's early Arthur Blessed people. Yeah. Arthur Blessed was this guy who had a mission on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, yeah. We know Arthur Blessed. And, yeah. yeah. And, 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 Carried and across. Carried across. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere. And, and Larry, Larry was brought to Christ by Arthur. But coming to Christ doesn't necessarily deal with some of your personality issues. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. And well, so Larry, like the devil this story is about to bring out. Right, music. Right. Uh, Larry comes out and, and he's, he, everybody's, you know, hey, Larry. That settles down and he goes, and he talk in a voice like that, you know. He says, I don't think you have to throw a football and wear a jock strap to be a Christian. <laughs> and there was this collective thing in the audience like, he just dissed that last guy. Yeah, basically. he dissed him big time, and I'm going, and everybody, everybody's like, "Huh?" You know. And then he does his set, you know, and 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 uh, you know, the big one in our uh, parlance at the time was, uh, uh, "I wish we'd all been ready." I right. wish you know? we'd all been and, and ready. And everybody was singing along and everything, and and uh, you know, we were kind of a forgiving audience the rapture, and stuff like that, and. And so, you know, he did his, his thing. And then uh, later on, uh, a friend of mine that was part of our group that had come from, uh, from uh, West Texas, he was backstage and he saw Larry Norman and he wanted to meet him. So he went to meet him and Larry Norman wouldn't really shake his hand or anything. Didn't really want to talk but to his him wife, either. who was a very lovely person. Oh, uh, that's Larry Norman right there. Yeah, Larry wife. Norman and his wife. So this little... Yeah picture here right oh yeah there. sure and uh and and she goes she shakes my friend's hand and she goes hi i'm from hollywood <laughs> <laughs> okay because <laughs> she was yeah right. um yeah, so it was, I mean, it's just, it was. I think she was a supermodel. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. You know, agency and stuff and, like that. And, but she's come to Jesus, and she was married to Larry Norman at yes, the time. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, and so she's then still the big now. deal was the, the headline at the top of the of the day was Johnny and June and all of their crew, the Statler brothers and the the because they Carter were there family. too. Yeah, at G- yeah. At X plus seventy two. Yes, yes, <laughs> they were like the headliners. And, right. and the way Johnny did his shows back then was the Statler brothers and the Carter family girls would be out on the stage already. Right. And the music would start up, you know, some kind of upbeat kind of thing. 
And then the guys in the one of the guys in the Statlers, which is these guys. Where yeah, is there's it? Johnny right there. There's Johnny Statlers there's Johnny. somewhere. He's on there. Anyway, they might have been in there. No, yeah. Uh, oh, they're in here. They're in here. Uh, no, they're not. No. Anyway, uh, oh, there oh, they, they are. are. That's them. That's them right there. Sadlers and the Carter stuff. sisters. Oh yeah, right there. Okay. And so and this, this, was a, this was a regular. These guys were professionals. Right. And and so the music is playing, and this one of the Statler brothers goes up to the mic and says, "Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Johnny Cash show." <laughs> and 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 I I reacted to that. I went, "What? This is not the Johnny Cash show. This is the Jesus music show." <laughs> you know, and there right. were a lot of people in the audience who were like, "What are you talking about? Like, how does this things? How do these things what get is aligned?" This? And and uh, and uh, so you know he came out and did a lot of his gospel tunes and and uh, and it was it was great and, and and at the end Billy Graham and him came out and they were together and kind of holding each other's hands up in the air and yeah that's right there and right. all that yeah that's the the front picture there yeah and, that's right and but but another thing that was kind of kind of kind of a little bit off putting right was um, there we go earlier in the set. About midway through the morning, uh, Chris Christofferson. Oh, Chris Christofferson. And Rita Coolidge yes. came out. Yeah. And I'm going, Chris Christofferson? What's his deal? Protest countryman. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, but he had had an experience with Christ. Well, I think so. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't sure. But, but um, so one of their songs that they did was Charlie Rich's Lord Help Me Jesus. They did a cover of that. Lord, help me, Jesus. Mm. I've wasted it so. Help me, Jesus. My soul's in your hands. Yeah. It's a story about a guy being drunk and, and yeah, you right. know, messed up and, and everything. And Charlie Rich wrote it and actually recorded it. But Chris does it in this in this performance. And and everybody was singing along. It was like, it was like cool. And then suddenly he kind of stops. And and he's up. He's, he, say, he, he says... I'm not getting any monitor up here, man. Chris Christopherson yeah. said, I'm not getting any, any monitor up here, man. What's going on? And everybody's like, what, what is he talking about? We didn't know all that stuff. Yeah, right, sure. <clears throat> and so he, he, was, he, was, he was upset that the, the sound people weren't giving him the support that he expected. And, and that just kind of turned it all kind of flat. It was like, oh, you're one of those people. Right. Mm. You know, and poor Rita's sitting there kind of going, you know, because she was real nice and, and everything, and, and I didn't associate anything, you know, like that with her. But but he just he just kind of went off about the the setup or the monitors the sound or whatever and stuff. Yeah. And so there was a lot of things like that that happened. Rough around the kinda, edges. You know, oh, and and the thing that I learned later from another from this friend of mine that was on staff is that a lot of that had come together, uh, kind of, you know, close to the day. Last right? minute. Yeah. Last minute. And uh, so most of the groups, like Andre Crouch and and the Love Song and and and, and a lot of these uh, you know up with people types, they were already on the schedule. They'd already been notified. Sure. They'd already done their thing. But Chris was one of those that had found out about it from Johnny, right. and he said, "Hey, I want to come. I want to come sing." And so Johnny basically shows up with him right. and says, "Oh, and Chris is going to sing too." You know, right? right. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. And, and it was it was just a, it was a very very strange thing what's well, altogether you know what's really interesting is that the uh when when these types of things happen as far as like revival right yeah. people start meeting jesus it starts spreading like yes. really quickly yeah and it very quickly goes beyond the power of any kind of leaders to control it mm-hmm. or and direct so, it yeah. or direct it and so even the attempts <laughs> to and, and so this is there's these two things battling each other. You know, one is leaders are trying to, they're thinking we need to disciple people. But at the other hand, you know, it's, hey, anybody can be in on this. Yes. Right? And anybody can join in. And so there's this openness. And so, you know, the I think the, the important thing is like, it's messy. You know, the Holy Spirit, whenever the, when the Holy Spirit starts doing stuff, when people start meeting Jesus, there's a lot of stuff that gets stirred up, good and bad. Good and bad. I'm glad right? you said that. And, and you got, you know, you got people, it's like, just because you met Jesus doesn't mean that everything in your life is all fixed no. now. In yeah. fact, a lot of the stuff that was still, was bad, was, is still bad. Yeah. 
and he's he's still loving you. You know, it's like he loves you, and you're you're part of his kingdom, and yet not all of you is part of his kingdom yet. And uh, you know, there's this crazy. And, and we stuff have going this on. thing where we expect these people to be godlike. Well, they're, and we expect ourselves to be. Yeah. Yeah, we expect ourselves to be at some point. Yeah, you yeah. know, if I'm in this long enough, yeah. man, I think I ought to be like following Jesus. And yeah. I find that the more that I follow Jesus, the more I am aware of how far away yes. from Why? you know perfect I am, and yet how much I'm loved. And Paul, That's the Paul, collision of the, Paul talks about right. being the chief of sinners. Chief, that was he wrote that last. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of his life. At first he said, I think I could be compared to the most eminent of apostles. And then he's like, I'm the least of all apostles. And then he gets to the point where he's like, I'm the chief of sinners. Of sinners, you know. Christ came came for sinners of whom I am chief. uh, That is just an amazing thing, man. Right. But I think that's what... uh, what, And that's that's what was on on display. And and, and maybe it was good. Maybe it was good because if it had all been like plastic and doodah, uh, that might not have had this quite the same effect or the impact or whatever. I was talking to somebody, uh, I can't remember who it was. I don't remember who it was. He, he said something like, he said, so why, why is it though? I know these, I know I have friends who are, they'll say they're Christians, but they like are really mean to a number of people. Yeah. And, and he's like, and so I'm, I'm talking to you and he's like, you are gracious and kind to all these different people. He's like, why is that? And I'm like, well, okay, I think it's, I, I mean, you, you haven't seen, you haven't seen me in my my bad parts apparently, because I can be just as mean as anybody else. But the other part of it is that I think I keep being forgiven, and I think that you have to keep being forgiven, you know, because that's what that's what Jesus says. Jesus said, "People who love much, who have been forgiven much." And the problem isn't that we haven't had a lot of stuff to be forgiven from. You know, oh, you you grew up in in the church. You were doing all the things right. Yeah. I but, had my I had my own uh, secret life, and, and it Jesus, wasn't good. And even your public life, Jesus yeah. knew you needed to be forgiven yeah. from all that stuff yeah. too, yeah. right? And so the more that we keep allowing ourselves to be forgiven year yeah. after year after year, day after day after day after day, God God puts shows us He's like, oh, see yourself in them. To yourself and them, they need to be forgiven too. And I want to love them just like I'm loving you. You feel me loving you? Because what do you get when you're being forgiven? You're being loved. If you're willing to yeah. come to Jesus and show your rough spots and show the places that aren't good and and co- just come to Jesus, then he's like, you're, you're very aware of how far short you are, and yet you're also incredibly aware of how much he loves you. And when he loves you, he changes you, and something of his love stays in you, yes. and you're at now able to love more people, you know? Yeah. So imperfectly, like, but Im- yes. Imperfectly and imperfect people. Yes. And so, you know, what do we need? Keep being forgiven so we can keep loving people. Yeah. Keep and, coming to Jesus. Oh. Despite oh. the... Uh, oh. Despite the craziness and the mess, did it feel like this changed your uh, society or community? You saw it change. Um, I think so. I, 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 I just you know observed a lot of the the people uh, at the nighttime meetings or or, or especially on Saturday uh, deeply affected. I mean, I was. But I, I looked around and, and there was like sort of a camaraderie. It was like yeah, yeah. everybody's like totally stunned listening. in a good yeah. way. Yeah, everybody's wrapped. Like, and and it this was thing that's happening. Oh, I mean, it was it's like a wave even even away. with the you know the weird little petty stuff that went on. It was still just it was amazing. You know, uh, how, how 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 long would you say did it feel like the ride lasted in a way? I mean that. I don't know, maybe six months or something. Oh, uh, from you know, there. Oh, okay. In yeah. terms of in terms of uh, associating a lot of of what I was experiencing with that event, oh, with those, that event, those yeah. events. Because you went back to Houston. Yeah. 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 And with and, the crew that you came from from right. in Houston. Right. Um, and, but uh, the, but and, but what did stuff seem different at your uh, at your church? Well, I was I was or? I was in two camps. You know. I was I was I was a member of a Bible church, right? And if you have not been a member of a Bible church, it's a very <laughs> sort of 
it's a very straight experience kind of structured you know, structured thing yes thing and um so uh i you know the the church in houston was just a wonderful group of loving loving people and and well ray was there but ray ray loved people in his own way uh, you know <laughs> ray one of the things i was gonna say ray johnson one thing one thing when one time when we were talking about uh the love song and he said you know i've been with him when we've gone to a, 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 a a town to have a performance and we get these phone calls from a church there in town and a pastor calls us calls me up and says hey we would just love if you guys could come and just sing a song for us in our worship time on sunday right. would you be able to do that right and the first few times it was like you know there's a logistic thing but yeah we could come we just bring some guitars and just you know, do do a couple of songs and everything, and and the thing was there was this sort of static commitment mm. to something called a love offering, uh-huh. right? And we'll be sure and take a love offering, uh-huh. for right? You. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened was very quickly he realized that, you know, a love offering usually amounted to somewhere between five dollars and twenty five dollars. Wow, right? You supposedly had canvassed your you know, congregation to to make this gesture, and it was paltry, paltry. And he, huh. he was the first one who introduced me to a phrase: "Promise them anything, but give them the shaft." Wow, right? He 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 was he was pretty bitter about it. They 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 put sure. up with a lot of a lot of Ray, stuff. Is it what Ray Johnson Ray said? Ray Johnson yeah. said, yeah, because he's promoter yeah. of these guys. Yeah, and and he's seen it. Yeah, he knew he knew that there were a lot of there were a lot of. Uh, People yeah. that you'd meet in the business who had this persona that they projected that didn't yeah. really wasn't who they were, and and these kinds of things. And so he had he had sort of made his uh, made his peace with it. But hmm. interesting, yeah, wow. And another thing that about that is you know uh, one of the things that that uh, that this phenomenon this the, the, the Jesus movement uh, created was a sense of you know all those things that we have that we've been upset with our society for allowing or for performing you know we're gonna our influence on that society is going to be more of Jesus there's now that now that we are excited we really know who he is we're in a relationship with him yeah, yeah. that's going to have a that's going to have a, a ripple effect in political things and in social mm. things mm-hmm. and and it and it did, it sure did. Yeah, in, it did. In, a, in a very good sense but the one area that it didn't really have a profound success rate at was christian marriages interesting mm. because a number of these people were no longer married a few years later yeah, I wasn't married a few years after that. Okay, you know, I was married for thirty years, and then uh, we were we we were divorced. And um, I started making a list one time of of uh, people that I knew of whose relationships had, you know, gone a bust. And and I quit when I named the twentieth couple. Yeah, and these right. were people too I went many to, people I went to church with. Yeah, right. you know, and and so that's the one thing that's kind of haunted me is, you know, we. We we had we did have an impact, you know we really did, uh, but like you were saying, yeah, it was a lot of imperfect people who were being forgiven, and they were trying to show that forgiveness to everyone that they came in contact with, but part of their imperfection was that they're in their own relationships with their spouses, right? Things did well. not. Yeah. Things did not succeed, and wow. um, yeah. Oh, and here's another another thing that was that was sort of an offshoot of that was the Jews for Jesus thing. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, and did you is, know people? Did you? Uh, did yes, I I met them. They were they performed once in Houston, uh, Hineni, and they were great. They were. I'm sorry. Whoa. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, Liberated Wailing Wall, and and they they had a they had a great influence for. 
a number of years. Uh, they were kind of an offshoot because they were, you know, uh, this the Maranatha thing had sort of awakened a lot of messianic, of, uh, Jewish. messianic Jew Jewish people uh, to, and then there were people in that community who were artistic, right. who were musicians and and rock writers and things. Mm-hmm. And, Hey, why don't we do this? And and so they did stuff, but it was very it was great because it was using the rock idiom like the other groups were. Yeah. But it was very closely focused on things about being Jewish. Yeah. Being the people of the book. Yeah. You know, and it was it, it was really It's nice. not something we see a whole lot of today no. in the, in the in the in the in the public eye necessarily. No. Yeah. No. Uh, it was that was kind of unique. It seemed to be unique to uh, that time uh, that we don't see too much of today. Yeah, hmm. I had one more. I was going to show you. Where is that one? one well, and it it changed some worship too. Oh you know, sure, you had a lot of that style filtering. Oh, here's into one the, of their here's one the of the records right here. Main worship. Look at that. I was wondering. Yeah, Jews for Jesus. I was wondering if they had. You know, then then shall the virgin rejoice well, in the dance. Yeah, really. I don't you, see any I, of those. I don't here. think that's on that one. Mm-mm. No, um, that's a good job. I don't know where people heard that. What what records do people hear that Vineyard stuff song, from? Vineyard Song, four ten. Let me see that other book, Vineyard Song. I think that was the book. The bis this one because it's Isaiah, and that's from where yeah. that's from. La 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 la. They are driving la, out la, into the wilderness. Of the yeah. La 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 la. Oh, San Rafael, California. No, definitely not. <laughs> not. Then, then something My reached, had a vineyard that reached way Hill. across yeah. the water. Right, this is it Malcolm and Alwyn. Malcolm and Alwyn. This is one of your favorites. These guys from were from Great Britain. Britain. They were from Liverpool. England. Oh, nice. Liverpool. They, uh, they had a, an acquaintance. They knew the uh, Paul and, uh, and uh, Ringo. Oh, okay. They didn't know everybody, and they, they weren't, like, intimate with the group, but Do you they had Liverpool roots with them. Yeah. And and they came to Christ and formed this group and made this fabulous music. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it was just, Ray gave me this. This was a demo copy of the thing. Wow. And Malcolm he gave and this to way. me. He said, "You got to. This is going to wipe you out. It's so good." Wow. And and it is. I, it's I want to fabulous check music. Out. And and um, uh, uh, Alwyn later became a pastor at a church in Florida. Oh wow! Um, where I and think he's retired England. now. Yeah. No, yeah. And um, but but just just there was all this music was just coming from everywhere. That's you crazy. Know? It's yeah. like when it's like when people start coming to Jesus, everything comes alive. Everything just starts blossoming. It felt like that. I mean, it was, you know, flourishing. And it didn't stay in the States. I mean, it, it, it crossed the pond. It went to all. Yeah. It, I'm telling it was you. English it, speaking kind of a deal. You yes. know, you Australia. Know it just says started to me, new churches. Yeah. You, we come up with all these strategies and ideas <laughs> and things that need to happen, and we need to organize movements, and, and we've got to, you know, tell everybody and do all this stuff. You know what we need? We need Jesus. Yeah. We yeah. need Jesus. We need Jesus to come and, and live in us. We need Jesus to visit us. We need his power yeah. to explode and fill our nation and fill the nations. We need him to rise and show himself, show his glory. Lord, come. Yeah, really. We yeah. need you. Come on. Oh, yeah. Once again, we don't want it just to be the stories of yesteryear. Right. We don't want, I don't want to live <laughs> knowing that my generation didn't have our own in encounter with Jesus. We want encounters with Jesus multiple over and over again. And yes, we want to live with you forever. And we want marriages to be uh, to be put together and to be rescued. And we want to be part of them that uh, survive and last and f- thrive and flourish. But man, we need more of Jesus. We just need more of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I see, don't want to come up with more other solutions because he is the solution. And yeah. you, you pointed the one other thing that was such a powerful feature of, of all of this was that we really believed that Jesus was about to come back. Oh, right. We were talking about imminent return. We, were, we would talk about, you think it's going to be next year or maybe, yeah. maybe the right. year after? Right. Wow. Yeah. And, we, and this was serious discussion. Serious. Because he yeah. feels so close. And then, and then in 1972, everything was. How Lindsay come out comes out with uh, sure, the Lake Great Planet, Planet, Planet Earth, Earth. Yeah. and everybody went completely flippo over that book because it seemed to affirm everything wow. that we were 
thinking about right, it. Yeah. You know, it just seemed like it was, hey, it's it's just on the he's just on the other side of the wall, man. Right. You know, and 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 so there were great songs like Maranatha, you know. That's it for the Nevcast this time. Join us next week when we talk justice, business, and art in pursuit of Jesus. We will see you soon.